YouTube, how's it going? It's your guy Nutsy Poo back with another video today. And today's video is year two of our Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. It's the trade deadline special. It's time for your buckos to make a couple of moves to hopefully set us up for success moving forward. This offseason is going to be a big one because I want to start competing next year. I want to be in the running for a wild card or a divisional title. So it's going to be important. Not only are we going to make a handful of trades, but then on top of that, we made a couple of roster changes to help keep us in line with the real life Pittsburgh Pirates. As you guys know, last week was the MLB draft and it's huge for the Pirates. They had a really good draft, so we want to bring some of that realism into this franchise to make it authentic moving forward. If you guys haven't already, feel free to drop this video a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're new. YouTube tells me about 50% of the people that watch my content are unsubscribed. So let's go ahead and change that. Without much further ado, let's get into the trade deadline special. Okay, so first off, I want to show you guys some of the roster changes we made real quick. And the two biggest, or I guess technically there's three big ones. Number one, we added Bubba Chandler to the game. Bubba Chandler was the Pirates' third round pick, I believe. He's a really interesting player. He had uh, he had jumped on to play quarterback at Clemson, but the Pirates were able to come in, draft him, and he ended up signing with the Pirates. He's a starter. MLB had him projected as the 21st best prospect in the draft, but he's also potentially a two-way player so I had to go find someone who's a two-way player to make this happen he's technically a shortstop secondary but I couldn't find someone who was just shortstop so we have him first base third base shortstop secondary uh, unfortunately you can't change secondary positions after uh, a pitcher is in the game they're locked with them so it is what it is but we have him at an 87 potential which I think is fair for a you know top 15 to top 25 26 prospect uh, in a draft he looks very good. I tried to make his statistics as realistic or his attributes as realistic as possible. But Bubba Chandler, a high school arm, one of the highest rated high school arms in the draft. The Pirates were able to get him. The second one is Anthony Solometto. He is another high school arm. The Pirates were really happy to get him. He was projected as the 16th best prospect in the draft, and they picked the, him in the second round. He has a really funky three-quarters release from the left side. He was the best high school lefty in the draft a lot of people said so we were able to you know throw him into the game as well he'll be a big part moving forward he's only 18 over or years old as well so he's a few years away from hitting but he's another good 87 88 prospect and then finally if we scroll through here you'll notice someone is missing I picked Kumar Rocker in the draft thinking he had a pretty good shot of going number one overall. I was completely taking a guess. So what we did is because the Pirates ended up taking Henry Davis, the catcher from Louisville, I decided to do the same thing. We traded Kumar Rocker to the Mets. So he's a Met in this franchise, and we brought Henry Davis back for the Pirates. The college uh, catcher, one of the best bats, if not the best bat in the draft. Very, very good. Look at those hitting attributes, coupled with a plus arm, 70, um, 70 arm strength off the get-go. Not a great fielder at catcher yet, but hopefully that can develop. Henry Davis is our big time prospect. I think he has a 91 or 92 potential in game. I basically flopped him for Kumar Rocker and sent Kumar Rocker over to the Mets like he is in real life. But the important part of this franchise to me is the realism. It's why I wanted to, you know, try to realistically re rebuild the Pirates. And having those three big prospects is a really, really big part of that. So welcome to the team, Henry Davis, the future of the catching position. As you can see, he's a 69 overall. He was a junior in college when the Pirates selected him, I believe. So it makes sense he would only take a year, maybe a year and a half to hit the majors. Uh, so this is technically his first year in, in you know, in our minor league system, hopefully he can he can show out. I have him in double A. He potentially could get go or go to triple A before the end of the year. I don't think he starts with the big league team next year, but be, by middle of the year, I'd imagine he's up and playing, uh, which, you know, leads to questions of one of our favorite players on the team, Jacob Stallings. So really quickly, looking through our roster, I think that there's a handful of trade candidates for this trade deadline. You have Stephen Brault here, who has, you know, a kind of high potential. He's 29 years old, though. His contract is important because he has two years of control, which I think makes him a good trade candidate. He has a 4-1-3 ERA. He could really sure up the fourth, fifth position of someone's bullpen. I think Stephen Brault might be headed out in this trade deadline. 
Another one is Mark Melanson, the 37-year-old, a 71 overall. He has a 176 ERA, is absolutely killing it this year. He's another trade uh, trade piece potential. Colin Moran, I know he's been a big part of our lineup, but he's 29 years old. He has B potential. He's 77 overall. He's hitting 288 with 16 home runs this year. And the important thing is he has two years of control left. I think Colin Moran is a bet or a bat that I think a lot of teams would look uh, look to pick up if this was real life. And then finally. I think the last piece of the puzzle we could potentially be training is Mark Canna. If you guys remember, I picked him up in the last offseason, hoping he would be a flippable piece at the trade deadline. He's a 71 overall, 256 average with 11 home runs, still can play the field relatively well. I think Mark Canna makes sense to trade if we can find a good trade partner for him, someone who needs an outfielder or some outfield depth. And then that would allow us to bring up Hunter Bishop to make his debut for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, he's 269 with 14 home runs in AAA. I think he's about ready to come up, and that's how we would replace him. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with Gregory Polanco. He's technically stopping O'Neill Cruz from playing every day in right field still, uh, especially against righties. So it might be time to DFA Gregory so we can make sure O'Neill has his playing time. The Rays need a first baseman. They have G-Man Choi. Honestly, the Rays could make a lot of sense for Colin Moran. They're leading the division. I think Colin Moran makes sense to go to the Rays. They like control. He's a low, low cost piece. Let's go ahead and see what we can make happen here. I don't think they would give up an A potential, uh, but maybe this, maybe like a Seth Johnson makes sense here or a Brent Honeywell makes sense here. I mean, he's 25 B potential. Man, they have so many A potential pitchers. That's bonkers. I think we're going to go, you have Bryce Wilson from the Braves too. Four seam slider, change up sinker, Seth Johnson. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can go Bryce Wilson. Oh, wow. They are not even looking to make that trade. I mean, they would go Seth Johnson straight across. What about Sandy Gaston? Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and do Bryce Wilson. Let's go ahead and throw in just a, a throwaway reliever here. Um, all right. Perfect. Throwaway reliever, Colin Moran for Bryce Wilson. And that gives us a little bit of help at starting pitcher. Now let's see if we can go ahead and trade maybe Steven Brault to someone who uh, needs some starting pitching help. Uh, the Phillies make sense, honestly. And he's in AAA. Hold on. Let me see. Where are the Phillies at in the divisions? The Phillies are second in that division. The Phillies actually make sense for Stephen Brault. As much as this one hurts me, because I love Stephen Brault as a player. Like, this is a trade that kind of needs to happen. Uh, one of the things I would like to get back, if possible, is a decent reliever with high potential. Stephen Brault for JoJo Romero straight up. I like JoJo. Sinker slider forcing changeup. 24 years old, could come in, you know, be a contributing part of the bullpen over the next couple of years. I like that trade. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then finally, Mark Canna. The Yankees do need help in center field. They're not ready to bring up uh, Jason yet. So let's go Canna to the Yankees. This is one that I don't think we would get very much back. Maybe, maybe if we could get like a, you know, C reliever back someone to try to fill the void that Melanson's about to have like you know Tyler Lyons for example for Mark Hanna you know that's a 33 year old reliever maybe a Reggie McClain 27 B potential maybe throw in uh you know another young C potential reliever there you go two relievers back that's perfect and then finally the last trade we're going to make is for Mark Melanson Time to go find someone who needs some bullpen help. The Astros need a bullpen piece really, really bad. So this makes sense. And honestly, I think Melanson, I know he's old, but I think Melanson could bring in a B potential-ish prospect. Just because, I, you know, bullpen, bullpen pieces are so hard to come by. And good bullpen pieces. I mean, we could take a flyer on this Nick, Nick Ames. 24 years old, 54, I think that Nick Ames makes sense. And we need help 
at first, and then maybe we can throw in a, you know, kind of throwaway reliever to sweeten the deal a little bit. Yeah, Shane Duncan and Nick Ames for Mark Melanson, and Mark Melanson goes to the Houston Astros. Let me just go ahead and look one time through to see if we can find a trade partner for Gregory Polanco so we can free up that position. Honestly, Gregory Polanco to the Twins does not seem like a bad call. Gregory Polanco, this is where we would get like nothing back. It would be like a couple of C potential relievers. So like 25, yeah. Gene Cosme, 25, 58, C potential. Gregory Polanco. And Gregory Polanco is out of Pittsburgh. GG's, Greg. I hope you can go win a championship, man. You're one of my favorite pirates, even though you haven't always lived up to the hype. Uh, good luck there. So here's what we have going on right now. Uh, Bryce Wilson, I'm going to send him down to AAA because I don't really want him there. But we are going to make the addition of Will Crow to the majors. Uh, he'll be one of the, you know, either a long reliever or into the, the rotation. And then center fielders, this is the important one. Hunter Bishop, I think it's time for him to make the major league roster. Yeah, let's do it. Hunter Bishop, add him to the 40-man and move him up to the majors. And Hunter Bishop is your everyday starting center fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates now. So let's get a quick player lock in with our guy, Hunter Bishop. He's hitting ninth in our lineup against Blake Snell. Not very good hitter against lefties. This is going to be kind of rough, but here we go. Pirates. Dan Plesak and Mark DeRosa and Dero, a major league debut on tap in this one for a guy that comes pretty highly regarded as a prospect. Making Major League debut, Hunter Bishop, 279, 39 runs, 14 homers, 41 RBIs, 269 average with an 800 OPS in AAA. Hopefully he can come up and perform at the Major League level. This is kind of an early call up for him. Generally, I don't like to call up players until they're like 72, 73 overall. But I mean, with this Pirates team, it's time to call up the Young Bucks and see if they can perform. All right, start with a play in center field. This will help the, uh, the old nerves for Hunter, I'm sure. Hasn't been getting the results. Oh, nice. Nice, easy pop out. Before. Love it. Bishop is there now, and he has it to gone. This is empty and here with Machado two away. Away. And standing in now, the always dangerous third baseman, Manny Machado. High in the air out to center field. Bishop gets under it and makes the catch to end the inning. Big league at bat is no small feat. You got to think he's really Man, the, happy the shadows in PNC Park yeah, are Maddie, ruthless this, this time of day. Training. All right, we strike out in our Next first at bat. I mean, Padres. Blake Snell's a good pitcher. There's a reason he's leading the Cy Young candidacy this year. Easy oh, that's going to get down, though. Can't make that play. That's in fine. There, a base hit. That's fine. That's fine. Well, wasn't going to be able to make really that play. Pitch mark right there, down in the side. Wow, 8-1 to one here. Quinn Priester throwing an absolute gem right now through four innings. Let's go, Quinn. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. Hey, I like this right here. Offense putting a little bit... All right, so San Diego has scored three. They scored a couple in that last one. We're facing you, Darvish, in the fourth. Don't really know what's going on here. Oh, get through. Oh, he gets robbed. Oh, I thought that was Hunter's debut. Oh, my God, I thought that was his first hit. That was a good swing. Jay Cronenworth absolutely just robbed me there. Wow, what a play. So now. much pain. For one for him here in this one. The first base, Eric. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Bishop is there, two gone. Next will be the designated hitter, Trey Mancini. Perhaps he can drive another one out of the park just like he did back in the second. Belted high and deep into right center. A ball that's carrying. Oh, let's go, Hunter. At the warning track, man. He's going to be a good defensive center fielder, too. Let's see if we can get his first hit here. Got you, Darvish, on the mound still. He's over two. That was a good swing he put on the last one, though. 
set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Oh, good pitch. Swing that wow. Time, but it's a full two strikeouts I have for Hunter Bishop in his debut. I'm in pain right now. New inning set to get underway. I can't and believe I got robbed out of the second hit, though, still. Fan. That was wild. Well hit the other way. Ooh, that's going to be a problem. The gap. Around first, he's digging for second. Gets it back in. Does give up the double. I wasn't going to be able to make that play. That was a deep shot into the gap. Not much I can do there. Got him. And he goes down on the strikes for the gross. third time. All right. Well, three strikeouts. Not what you're looking for out of your major league debut for Hunter Bishop. But at least he's played very, very good defensive baseball in this game. There we go. Nice, easy pop out. Bishop will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the well runner will have to head back to first. 14 to 5, the final Quinn Priester so does one. get the win, has seven strikeouts, three walks, gives a five earned. It's unfortunate. Left him in for a long time, but we do get the 14 to 5 win. Unfortunately, went over in Hunter Bishop's debut, but it is what it is. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like on it. It's very much appreciated. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you are new. This is the beginning of a new era in Pittsburgh Pirates baseball. Next year, it's really going to be a change. You're going to see a shift in this franchise. Uh, we're going to try to get out a handful of videos this week on this. We're going to try to finish up at least the second season, but expect a lot of these Pirate franchises to start trucking along. If you guys haven't already, also feel free to follow me over on Twitch. I stream Mondays through Thursdays at 8.15 Eastern Time. My Twitch link is in the description below. Also, feel free to follow me over on TikTok and Twitter. Both of those links are down in the description down below as well. Until next time, guys, stay safe out there. We'll see you soon. Peace.